Hey everybody, welcome back to another Art Type 101. Uh, it's been a minute since I've actually gone around to make uh, videos again. Uh, obviously with everything that's happened in the world, it's made it kind of difficult to stay motivated to stay in the game. But regardless, we're getting a whole new base set and with a base set comes a slew of new archetypes. So, for the week leading up to the official release of Set 10 Unison Warrior, we're going to go through Mono Yellow Shenron. Quick reminder, this isn't a deck list, this isn't you know, how you should go about building your decks. This is just going through the just 101 of what the archetype's all about so that you know what to expect if you're ever facing or if you ever want to pick up the deck. So going on forward, we're going to start with the quick lore. What are Shadow Dragons? Just to give you guys an idea of where this all comes from. Uh, came from Dragon Ball GT. They were dragons created by the negative energy from the wishes of the Z Fighters, Dragon Balls. So anytime they made like a good wish, like bring people back to life, that created counter energy magic. And that's how, you know, over time it overflowed into the negative dragons being what they were. The archetype really revolves around using the negative energy balls to cheat out bodies. And then with the cheating out of the bodies with a bunch of like control energy manipulation stuff from your opponent, you're essentially just beating them down, chipping them away piece after piece. So before we look at the entire archetype, then what's the big end game? What are, what's our closer? What are we trying to do? And it's within this archetype, it's this nine drops in Shenron. So he's a blocker, revenge. He ex evolves on a Sin Shenron for one yellow with an energy cost of four. And then he's very control Eoli. So when your opponent plays a battle card, you may choose that battle card ignoring barrier and negate its skills for the turn. Mind you, this isn't once per turn, which means as for the rest of the game, as long as Sin Shenron's there, your opponent won't be able to have cards with skills the turn they play them, which is really key. Mind you, this doesn't get rid of things that, you know, proc when they enter, because by the time a card enters the, uh, the battle area, your auto pens before Sin Shenron's gets resolved. So if you have a card that can destroy Sin Shenron or whatnot, well then, you can go ahead and do that. But things like Double Strike, Permanence, anything of that sort, you're going to always be on a one turn delay. He's a 30k beater also, which isn't nothing. And finally, if you ever do get to remove him with a skill, he draws two cards and then plays a one star ball from your drop area. And like we said, the negative balls are what it cheats out all these cards in the first place. So you can go around and try and beat him, but your opponent's going to plus off of it. It's crazy. And he gets to set up his engine to get started all over again. So before we start looking into how we're cheating out cards, let's at least clear the leader out of the way first. So Sin Shenron. When this card attacks, look up to five cards, top of your deck, add up to one Shadow Dragon card among them from your hand, and then shuffle your deck. I'm fairly certain the one-star balls fall under Shadow Dragons, which means, uh, you know, if you're running a Shadow Dragon deck, you're going to be running this thing because selective card draw, and while you can whiff, there's enough Shadow Dragons in the deck that that should never happen. Um, selective card draw is better than just random card draw. Then, at the end of your turn, choose up to one yellow Shadow Dragon card in your battle area and switch it to active mode. So it's kind of like a... Pseudo ape uh, effect where you know end of the turn they restand themselves. It's great. Uh, the deck has a decent amount of blockers. It, it takes some of that from the ape archetype. And finally, it awakens when your life is at three or less, or you have a yellow unison card with a specified cost of four in play. You may draw two cards and switch up one your energy to active mode. Unison cards are the new cards of the set. It's a whole you know wow factor of BT10. And that's, uh, they're essentially Planeswalkers. We had them similarly to like when sh we had Shenron cards that couldn't attack but could do like one of many things during a turn. That's effectively just doing that and taking it another step. There is a mono yellow one, so we'll cover them a little bit more before. But uh, Unison cards, really good. So, the Awakened side, we got Sin Shenron, negative, energy, overflow. When this card attacks, draw one card. At the end of your turn, choose all your Shadow Dragons in your battle area and switch them to active mode. So now instead of just choosing one, you get all of them to restand. Pretty dece. And then finally for six yellow energy, you get to play up to seven Shadow Dragons uh, with different names in your drop area. Uh, the different names is a little iffy. I don't even think there are that many Shadow Dragons. Which makes me think we are going to get more in the future. I'm fairly certain that the next time I do a Shadow Dragon R-Type 101, we're going to have to refer back to a bunch of these old cards because I, we're going to go through some of the cards and it does feel like the archetype was left open for way more to be there, which makes sense, right? Because there are seven different Shadow Dragons, not including the fact that Sin Shenron eventually absorbs all of them. So the archetype's still open and I don't think the archetype is complete yet. So the cheat. What's the deck doing? What's the engine? Well, we'll start off with negative two Star Ball. Uh, 
it's <laughs> one power it is a shadow dragon so it is searchable with the leader and it can't attack but it's not affected by your opponent's skills so it's just chilling on the board you know nothing's happening to it uh, i'm fairly certain though that the only thing that gets around this is if you drop its power below zero um because then it's the game mechanics that are killing off the card so keep that in mind for one yellow activate main if your leader card is a shadow dragon card and you place this card in its owner's drop area choose up to one his shenron card with an energy cost of two or three in your deck or hand play it then shuffle your deck if you look through it through the deck is always super powerful it means that you don't have to keep uh you know uh engine cards in your hand which means you can actually keep more gas that can either save you from the game or you can put more pressure super powerful and uh right now the only one i could find was this three drop when i searched so my presumption is there's going to be a two drop pay shenron that comes around eventually or there's one and i wasn't able to find it when i looked through the entire set so might be if that's the case otherwise it's kind of why i'm saying the archetype has been left open there's a bunch of cards that we haven't seen yet so maybe we see them in promos or maybe we see them in the next set but we cheat out this three drop he's a critical 15k and when this card is played add up to one shadow dragon card when it costs a four less from your drop area into your hand so that's basically just recurring like the one drop ball you know you the deck is really good at making sure that as you're going through your engine you constantly keep up card efficiency which you know in the state of bt10 dragon ball that's just the state of the game that's just if you're not doing that if you're not keeping up with card economy in a very like serious manner you're lagging behind finally we have this four drop that can ex evolve off of the three drop he's got double strike when a card evolves into this card switch this card into active mode and you can't play copies of this card for the turn fair it's a free ex evolve most of them tend to have this ruling and then a second auto if your lead card is a shadow dragon and you choose one shadow dragon card in your hand and discard it when this card attacks or is used in a combo so not, and he's a 5k combo mind you you get to choose one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode when energy costs greater than the current energy and ko it so not insanely powerful if anything you'd use this more for the double strike aspect to him a free double striker is always really powerful especially when you get him out for you know one energy and three cards worth later but at the same time there's a lot of battle card removal in set 10 you know uh, it's going to be really hard to close out games simply with battle cards because there's so much removal that's going to be around a lot of the counter attacks deal with battle cards invoker is still going to be a really good deck so while that's a good effect and obviously can be really powerful against certain decks i think it's going to be more situational than anything else realistically the one we're really looking out for is uh this one star negative energy ball and that's because it's a sin shenron engine same thing can attack isn't affected by skills and then if your leader is a shadow dragon for one yellow you get to pitch this card into the drop and go find a, a sin shenron between two and four from your deck or hand and play it i only found this four drop so i don't know where the two to four drops are <laughs> again <laughs> could be me He's got blocker. He's a 19k attacker. And when this card's removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, you get to draw one card and then play a one star energy ball from your drop area. Like, I'm, it's a lot of recursion in this deck. If you, it's constantly going to be able to keep its engine on board. And that's good. That's what makes it really annoying is the fact that it's a board state that you're really never going to be able to completely deal with unless you just have multiple ways of uh, forms of removal. And some of it has to be read to deal with the balls in the first place. Or you just negate skills and then remove them. So the board state is always going to be there. And your opponent's always going to eventually be able to hit you with at least 15Ks and 19Ks. Because they fetch right out of the deck. So regardless of what happens to the dragons, if they go to the drop, they're going to be able to find more from the deck or the hand. Very powerful stuff. And then when this card's played, choose up to one of your opponent's leader cards in rest mode or battle cards with an energy cost of four or less in rest mode. And it can't attack until the end of your opponent's next turn. So essentially locking down a card for the turn. We care a lot about this 4-drop Shenron also because he's the one that we can evolve into for that end game card. Um, so it's, like you can tell, a lot of cheating, a lot of recursion, and a lot of consistency because if the big bodies die, they go get the negative energy balls from the drop. And then the cards from the drop allow you to go fetch the big bodies from hand or deck, which means the deck is going to be really, really consistent. So then we go on to the searchers. Um, you have the leader, obviously. Uh, additional to the leader, you have uh, Jiru, Dragon Ball Discover, 
When this card is played, look at the top five cards of your deck. Add up to one yellow unison card with a specified cost of four or one yellow battle card with an energy cost of one among them in your hand. Then shuffle your deck. Effectively, this is just a negative ball searcher. I think you're fine without Jeruz, but granted, the deck really needs you to run the negative balls to be able to cheat through the rest of the deck. So I could see decks running a number of Jeruz just to make sure that they're able to get the engine started. Naturally, though, you just add these to your deck once you've actually maxed out, you know, four of a, every type of ball, depending on if you're running Haze or not. Then we have the Unison cards. So, very Planeswalkery. Uh, while I'm not going to go through everything about these, the rough overall is that these do not count as battle cards. These don't have character, eras, traits, none of that. They all have a specified cost of X. And based on how much you pay for X, so it could be minimum up to the specified cost. So he's got a specified cost of four yellow. So at a minimum, he's a four, he's a four cost or he could be 10 cost. That's how many markers you put on him. And then once per turn, you can choose one of these skills that plus or minus to up tick or down tick the markers, which then activates that ability. And then if ever the card has zero markers, it dies. Very planeswalkery. They can attack though, unlike Planeswalker. So that's kind of cool. So, Mekki Abura, Plotting Revival, super annoying card. He's got Blocker. Once per turn, when this card loses a marker due to an opponent's attack, choose up to one of your opponent's cards and switch it to rest mode. So, it's it's not battle cards, it's it's not, it's any card. So, <laughs> so if he, you know, taps your leader, he's probably denying you a draw. If he's tapping your energy, he's denying you plays. So you're effectively gonna have to probably tap out to try and take him down but at the same time he's gonna rest another one of your battle cards that you tapped out for so just really tough card to get rid of and then on top of that he's got his plus and his minus his plus one being draw one card then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode ignoring barrier and that card can't be switched to active mode until the end of your opponent's next turn similar to the shenron that we saw before essentially just stopping a card from being able to do anything and then minus four choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards gain control of it and switch it to active mode super annoying <laughs> and reminder that's a four and at minimum he comes out he's a four drop at a minimum so right away if you have any huge card that could be stolen be careful with this guy additionally some really important tech for you guys to know when an opponent steals one of your cards and the card has you know when it leaves the battle area blah 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 um text on it the guy who controls your the opponent controls that auto so it procs for you but because now your opponent controls the card he is the master of the auto and he's going to be able to do whatever that card says is a, is a similar uh, ruling that came when toa came so let's say uh the card says when it leaves the battle area uh, explode the board uh explode your opponent's board with him taking control of the card with this he's going to be able to blow up your board so be really careful if you're going up against um a yellow uh leaning deck that any cards you have on board can't just completely destroy you if they get stolen super important with that said we have a slew of defensive cards uh it's a very defensive oriented set in that a lot of cards deal with battle cards and obviously that's because they want to be able to push unison cards a lot of the cards in the set allow you to cheat them out if you use a unison if you have a unison on board so that's just something to keep in mind um so we'll just go through them uh dark dragon slaying bullet counterplay if you have a yellow unison in play so that's a cost you need to have a yellow unison in play if the battle card being played has an energy cost of four or less its skills is negated for the turn and it's played in rest mode so it's essentially a cold bloodless plus crusher ball in one card and then if all your energy is mono yellow, you can activate this card's counter skill from your hand without paying its energy cost by choosing two other cards from your hand and discarding them. Pretty decent. So as far as Shadow Dragon goes, you could use it. The, the only unison card that I saw that was really worth it, for, like, that was archetype specific, was the Mechiabura, and that's because it's kind of like a very controlly tap your stuff kind of thing that's very similar to the style that this deck is going for. Um, but it, it has its usages. Um, and additionally, it can be done for free, so pretty decent. Uh, we got Bulma, Devoted Supporter, Counterplay. If your leader card is mono yellow and you have a yellow unison card in play, if the battle card being played is an energy cost of two or less, it has a skill negated for the turn before being played, before being played. So this does stop, you know, 
uh, things that come in and do proc off, this Bulma is actually going to be able to save, like, let's say your 9-drop Shenron or, um, or just any card that you wouldn't want to die from an oncoming proc. It can stop Invoker from being able to use the 6-drop the, the that then allows them to catastrophic blow you for like 4 in a turn. So very, very decent card. Vegeta, Prideful Transformation. He's Blocker. Uh, counterplay, you can't activate the counterplay skills of other cards for the turn. So there's a whole slew of cards like this for this set where if you use this counterplay, you can't use any other ones. I believe every single color has one. And what it does is the battle card being played is played in rest mode. And then you play this card. Permanent, if you have a yellow units card with two or more markers in play, you can activate this card's counter skill from your hand without paying attention cost. So this is why, the, essentially if you have units in card, all these battle cards that counterplay, um, that counterplay are effectively free, but that's why you can only play one for the turn. So it's it's a it's a double-edged sword in that front. Release from evil. If your leader card is mono yellow, choose the attacking card, ignoring barrier, negate its skills for the turn, and it can't be switched to active mode until the start of your next turn. Permanent, if you have a yellow unit card in play, you can activate this card's counter skill from your hand without paying its energy cost. Again, just another free counter. And finally, burning Kamehameha. If your leader card is yellow and you have a yellow unit card in play, reduce the energy cost of this card in your hand by one if your opponent has four more cards in rest mode choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards in rest mode and ko it so again just cheaper if you have a unison card in play clearly all of these really want to enforce the fact that unison cards are the real big part of the strategy that we are trying to play set 10 moving forward none of these really being super specific to uh, shadow dragon archetype specifically but they all want to lead towards you know, playing a mono yellow deck using uh, yellow unison cards and set 10 really wants to reinforce mono yellow decks in general. So these being all very pretty much mono yellow leaning options, they're all available tech for the archetype. Finally, we have the SCR, SS3 Go Tanks Blazing Fusion. So he's an ultimate double striker. You reduce the energy cost of this card by one for each battle card with 15k power in your drop area. Uh, note, the er there is an errata for this card that says in your hand only, so it stops a bunch of shenanigans like him being able to search out from deck, yada yada, or the fact that it only works while it's on the battle area. Yeah. It's while it's in your hand, that's an errata. Remember, the Haze Dragon is a 15k, so odds are you're going to have a number of these, uh, a number of cards in here that are able to lower his cost. He can only go down to four, but still four for essentially a double striker that negates the skills of all of the battle cards is pretty D, so he's essentially a uh, King Vegeta. And finally, when this card is removed from your battle area by an opponent's skill, choose all your opponent's battle cards and energy in rest mode, ignoring barrier, place them in the owner's drop area. So, <laughs> very powerful ability. We've seen things similar to this, um, such as the Universe 7 Beerus. Uh, however, way easier to proc off because if your opponent wants to get rid of this card, odds are he's gonna have to use a skill to do it, or he's just gonna have to face a double striker the rest of the game. Remember that Mechiabra ruling I was telling you about? Be careful you have this card on board and you're playing against yellow. If they steal this, you're going to lose your board. So be very mindful when you're playing against that card. I think this will see a decent amount of play. It's not crazy, but it's definitely a good option if you're a battle card centric deck and you're leaning mostly yellow. It's very low opportunity cost to run, so keep that in mind and hey it's another go tanks card i will always accept adolescence go tanks i think he's a super great character and that wraps up mono yellow shadow dragons uh <laughs> obviously i'm a little bit rusty on this stills guys it's been a minute since i've been back but trying to get these through before the release so that you can decide what you want to play bt10 moving forward let me know if i got anything wrong you know like i said i think the archetype's kind of open because right now there's a lot of cards that aren't there that should be there so i'm feeling like we're gonna get more things in promos or in the next set but i could just be wrong and maybe i just missed some stuff so if i did let me know in the comments down below if you like the video hit that like button if you want to see more archetype 101s going into set 10 don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i'll see you guys on the next one ciao